Well, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord. Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning. It's uh, an exciting day for us. You know, we've been spending the last couple of uh, weeks uh, celebrating Christmas, uh, celebrating Advent, uh, all kinds of great services, both in the evening and during the day on Sundays. But today is a day that we are really celebrating. You know why? Today is the last Sunday in 2020. And I'm looking forward to that. Let's get this year out of here and get on to something new. I, I, I don't know if you realize, but uh, way back when we first started doing our services online and we invited you to be, well, at home uh, where you are. And I told you every, every week, be comfortable, have your coffee, have your breakfast, wear your slippers. Well, while you were doing that, we had to be here working hard, not drinking coffee. Well, today is a different day because indeed we are relaxed. I have my slippers on. You can't see them. I have my cup of coffee here. And today's the day when, uh, when the pastor and staff, we're going to be the ones who are relaxing. So I hope you enjoy it very much as we celebrate this uh, first Sunday of Christmas, the season of Christmas, but the last Sunday of 2020. Um, for announcements today, we just want to say, uh, um, just remember that uh, next week is, uh, is Epiphany, and we'll be looking forward to that. Uh, watch the announcements for the big uh, styrofoam pickup uh, in another week or so, and uh, we will be looking forward to that. Uh, thanks to all of our, uh, our uh, worship team who have been so, so uh, um, um, faithful in coming in uh, and in uh, leading all of these services in spite of the busyness of the season. Today we want to thank our musicians, uh, Mac Willert and Tom Sharp. We want to thank uh, our special musical offering is by Kim Mormon. Our song leaders today are Kim Mormon, uh, Erlin Dodd, uh, Kevin Murray, and uh, Elizabeth Dyer is uh, with us today as well. And uh, Discovery Time is by Elizabeth Dyer. Uh, our PowerPoint worship leader is Jacob Sneller, uh, sound by Ray St. Louis, and live stream by Aaron Mormon. We are so glad to have these people here to, uh, to make worship possible and to make this time together uh, so uh, very special. We are so glad that you're here. Let's relax, let's praise God, and let's worship together. The Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and bone. Jesus Christ is born today. All sinners before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. The Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now he hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. Join with me now in our call to worship. Lift your eyes and see the brightness of God's presence upon us. Arise and shine, for our light has come. In the midst of darkness, God's light shines through an infant child. Arise and shine, for our light has come. The star of hope shines on, and no darkness will overcome it. Arise and shine, for our light has come. Behold, God makes all things new. Let us look to the light. Arise and shine, for our light has come. Peace. 
don't know if you've noticed, but uh, week after week, uh, no matter what time of year it is, uh, whether it's the season of Christmas, whether we're in Advent or Lent or Easter or just in, in regular ordinary time, uh, an important part of our service is always the prayer of confession. We always begin with a call to confession and then uh, we share together this prayer of confession. And you might ask yourself, why do we do this all the time? Why do we have this particular prayer? Well, the reason is simple, is because we are a people who are forgiven. We are forgiven by God and it doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter uh, what sins we've committed. It doesn't matter whether you're a newborn baby who hasn't had an opportunity <laughs> to commit any sins or an adult who's had plenty of chances to make lots of mistakes. The truth is, is that we are people and as people, we are flawed. And the great thing is, is that God recognizes that and that God forgives us and that God gives us a brand new chance. What an amazing time here in this first Sunday of Christmas, uh, this time when we celebrate the birth of a new baby, when we would celebrate this fresh start for us, this time when we can begin again by confessing our sins and by being forgiven. Will you join with me now in our prayer of confession? God of wonder, you surround us with signs of your glory and surprise us with your presence. And yet we often miss the marvels you place before us. Forgive our dullness and make us alert to the ways you make yourself known that we might be witnesses to your good news and proclaim your extravagant love. Let us have a moment of silent and personal confession. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. <clears throat> Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. If we are in Christ, we become new people altogether. The past is finished and gone, and everything has become fresh and new. Friends, believe the goodness of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are already forgiven. cathedral cookies you know they have like little colored marshmallows in them they're, they're really really tasty I, I really like them I was gonna bring some today but I like snickerdoodles too those are those are some of my favorites a little cutout cookies oh I'm sorry we're back oh. yeah yeah you know one of the things that, uh, that that really brings us together as a family is the fact that that we get to know each other in ways that well, it's, it's more than just the people that you know on the street. We are, we are a family of faith here. We are a community uh, drawn together. Um, we know what our quirks are. We know what our problems are. We know what our gifts are. What an amazing thing that is. And, and even though we're not sitting in the, in the pews next to each other right now, and we haven't been for some time, the truth is, is that those gifts, they continue to work in this church. And they continue to be an important part of, of what we are. And they continue to be a part of our personality. And they continue to give us peace. Our peace comes from God. And our peace comes from being a family of faith. Peace be with you. And also with you. Let us share together the peace of Christ as we see those smiling faces of our OPC family.
the smiling faces of your OPC family. We love that you sent us these pictures. Don't forget now to send us your Christmas pictures. We love to see the season that you've just gone through. Merry Christmas. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Discovery Time. So this week, we're going to talk a little bit about overcoming challenges. So I want you to think about a time that maybe you encountered a challenge. And if you need some examples, you can probably look back on this year and um, you probably had to make about 100 different changes to your life, right? We had um, a, probably a new ways of learning how to go to school, whether that was from home or kind of um, learning how to readjust to seeing your family and your friends in a different kind of setting than you're used to or wearing your mask all the time. And all those things are probably kind of challenging at first, or maybe they still are a little bit challenging for you. But if you think about how good you are at those things now, I bet you're really good at logging onto your calls and getting all of your work done versus how you felt maybe a few months ago when all this was starting. You'd probably think, hey, I've come a really long way, and I'm sure that you have. So if you think about that, how looking back now, we can see all the progress that we've made and how I've overcome those challenges. Think about maybe something that's challenging you right now, maybe something that's a little bit hard for you to do. And if you think about in a few months or in a few weeks from now, you're probably gonna be able to look back just like today and say, hey, I've overcome this or I've gotten a lot better at it than I used to be. And so um, that's something that we can always be proud of is looking back on how we've overcome those different struggles. But something else to remember is that no matter what, we always have God there to help us with our struggles, whether they're big or small, whether it's school or this huge thing going on in this virus that we see in the news all the time. God is always there to help us with our challenges, okay? So I have a little bit of a visual reminder to show us this. So I've got two glasses of water and two oranges with me. So you probably notice this orange has its peel off and this orange has its peel on. So the orange with the peel off is somebody who forgets that God is there to help with their challenges and their struggles that they might be facing. And then when they get into the challenge, what happens? They sink and they probably have a harder time with it, right? But then this is us. We have God. We have God as our kind of our shield and our armor from these different challenges and how they might affect us. And look what happens. We float and we can rise above it and we can overcome all these different things that might be in our way. So I want you guys to think about that this week as maybe you encounter a challenge or something makes you a little bit frustrated that you have God on your side all the time and he's always going to be there to help you float and you won't sink. All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for always being there for us and to be and being our armor against all of our challenges. Please help us to always trust you. Amen. Bye.
Thank you, Kim and Elizabeth and all of the, the great talented people of OPC. How blessed we are. Before we look at our scripture reading today, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the blessings that you give to us. We hear them each and every Sunday when we gather together here. Uh, we see them as we watch uh, the church at work in the world. Uh, we realize them as we interact with each other and we do your work in sometimes in ways that are noticed and sometimes in ways that are not. Lord, we thank you for all of those who call you Lord, for all of those who claim you as their Savior, for all of those who are part of this amazing family. Be with us, Lord, today and in the days that follow as we turn to you for help and for hope and for an opportunity to, to know you better and to follow you more fully. We thank you and praise you, O God, as we look into your word now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Matthew. I'm going to be reading from uh, the sixth chapter, uh, starting with verse 25, here in the middle of this very interesting section um, that, that, that really does have to do with, with this time that we're in. Not, not, not so much the Christmas time that we have just kind of passed through, although it does fit, um, <clears throat> but this time of pandemic, because um, we have been in, not just in a time of, of difference, not just in a time of doing things um, out of our routines, but we've been in a time of worry and concern and, and uncertainty. And this is exactly what, uh, what, what Jesus addresses here in this part of the Sermon on the Mount. So listen now to the Word of God as I share with you from uh, the, 20, the sixth chapter of Matthew, starting with verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, <clears throat> which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of the Lord. Once again let us pray. Oh, gracious and loving God, how wonderful it is to be in your presence, 
to know your love, to follow your word. Help us now, each in our own way, to be able to live out what it means to be your children and to be your followers. We thank you and praise you now, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, <clears throat> here we are, um, the last Sunday of 2020. You know what kind of year this has been. And, and I have to start up. The, my last sermon of this year, hopefully, um, I have to start off, I have to apologize to you. Okay, so, so here's my apology. I apologize to you because, well, well, what I'm about to do, I've never done before, okay? And, and so it's very possible that this may turn out to be as much of a disaster as 2020 has been, but we don't know. Because what I have done is, well, I have written a poem about the year that has passed. And, and, and I did this, um, I, I did this kind of during the Christmas season with, with thoughts of the night before Christmas going through my head. And I started out with, with that kind of idea, but by the time I was done, it was more Dr. Susie than the night before Christmas Eve. So we shall see where we end up. So my apologies to you, my apology to anyone who's ever written a poem, uh, my apology to Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, uh, my apologies to anyone who's ever read a poem, but we are going to share it together and see where it ends up. This, this illustrious poem, which has never been read before in public, is entitled, Twas the Month Before COVID. So here we go. Twas the month before COVID came, and all through the town, nothing new was really happening, not a thing going down. We were all quiet as we lived on our own. After Christmas and New Year's, no virus had shown. It's amazing how much you take for granted in life until you're separated from your kids and your wife. Along came the Super Bowl, and we started to hear that a virus from China had found its way here. By the end of February, so many were sick that by the middle of March, we were in it too thick. We were closed down real tight, like a people embargo, unless you were a protester or the mayor of Chicago. No restaurants, no parties, no large groups or closed spaces. No workouts, no gyms, and no working type places. Worst of all came the news that our worship was closed. We'd never seen such a time when our faith was exposed. Our church was closed down. Our youth groups had no room. And the only way we could really meet was by Zoom. All the things that we loved, like mission trips and Green Lake, were canceled for the first time. It was too much to take. We had to wear masks and stay six feet away. And even the session had no place to play. Through Easter and confirmation and into the summer, this church quarantine had turned into a bummer. And then we discovered the most amazing thing, that our faith didn't need a sanctuary to ring. We worshiped at home, we watched on TV. Even though we were separated, there was so much to see. The song leaders sang and the instruments played. Aaron and Ray and Tim, they all stayed. The pastor, he read from that same holy book and he preached over and over till it finally took. Our communion was different. Our confirmation recorded. But the spirit never let our faith be distorted. The politicians, they rambled, told stories and lies. We didn't believe them, no matter how hard we tried. They told us the virus that soon would be gone, but it didn't seem to really matter which one of them won. The virus, it stayed after the commercials were finished. A vaccine is coming, we're told, but our faith was diminished. We still are kept out of our worshiping spaces, looking ahead to the day when we can see those familiar faces. Yet our God is stronger than the virus. We don't lose our hope. Through racism, elections, and murder hornets, we cope. The church remains strong. No matter what problems we face, our worship is faithful in spite of the place. That day will soon be here. 
if we can hang on, have hope. In just a few days, 2020 will be gone. That's it. For whatever it's worth, that's our, that's our thought about, about uh, COVID and the year and, and what a year it has been. Um, and, and it has been a strange year in which we have done things in different ways and in which we have, have coped um, in ways that we've never really expected. And, and I got to wondering, well, after all that we have been through and all that we have shared and, and all that we have not shared, what was it that we have learned from this strange year? Just, just a couple of things, because here we are at the end of one year, looking ahead to the next. We're starting to make plans for what 2021 will look like. We're starting to look ahead to what the new normal will be. We're starting to, to think about what will life be like when the, vac when the vaccine has taken effect, when, when the COVID is gone, and when we can get back to, to being the church. Even at that point, have we learned something from our experience? And I think we have. And I think the first thing that we've learned and, and this is not even unique to the church. This is, this is about all of us. The first thing that we've learned is that we're stronger than we think. We really can do things that we didn't expect. I, I know that, that when we first got hints that, that we were going to have to worship online, there was, there was a lot of fear. And we were worried that, that we could only do this for a very short time. And, uh, and, and yet the church was strong. And the people were resilient. And, and, and we were able to get through and do things that we didn't expect. And the same was true out there in the world. We were stronger than we thought. But on the other side of the coin, the second thing that we learned is that we take a lot for granted. In everyday life, there are things that we have that we just assume will always be there. We always assume that we can go to the store and buy groceries. We always assume that we can gather together in the sanctuary to worship. We always assume uh, that we can be together with our friends or go to the beach or go to the pool or wherever you like to spend your time. And the problem was, was that many of those things were either closed down or inaccessible or not available to us during this time. <clears throat> and we found that, that those things that, that we thought would always be a part of our lives sometimes weren't. Just a, just a couple of days ago, we, we thought we would always um, be together on Christmas Eve, a whole crowd of people sitting shoulder to shoulder in this sanctuary. And we weren't. Instead, we were worshiping from our homes and in different places. That thing that we always took for granted, it wasn't there. Now, the third thing that we've learned is that, well, we don't need as much as we think. You know, uh, there are things that you can... Um, get by without. Um, you don't have to go shopping every day. You don't have to, to be able to, uh, to go to the store and walk in and you know, buy that you know, gallon of milk or whatever it is that you happen to need. We kind of learn to plan ahead. Um, and and that, that was an amazing thing. The fourth thing that we learned, and I think this is maybe the most important on the list, we learned that the church is not a place. We learned that even though we love our building, we love our sanctuary, we love the way we spend time here, and we're looking forward to being back in it again, we learned that the church continued to function, and the church continued to be strong. And the, better than everything else, the church continued to represent God out here in the world. Didn't matter whether we could come through those doors or not, because the church is not a place. The church is a family. The church is not just a group of people, but the church is, is a group of believers drawn together in the presence of the Holy Spirit. What an amazing thing that is. The fifth thing that we learned is that friendships are resilient. Friendships can last. A friendship doesn't depend on being able to see someone every single day. A friendship is something that you share in your heart and in your mind. And in that strange feeling that you have, that, that there's a person that you enjoy being with. There's a lot of people whose, whose places I can see in the sanctuary that I haven't seen for almost a year. And yet those friendships remain strong. And when we see those pictures up on the screen, and we remember that those are the people we used to sit by, we remember that those aren't just faces of people we kind of know. 
Those are the faces of people we love and care about and enjoy being with. Those are our friends. And this virus hasn't changed that. The sixth thing that we've learned, and we kind of knew this before, but this has been a good demonstration, is that God is always present. God doesn't go away when things get tough. God doesn't leave us alone when we're doing well. Our God promises to be with us all the time. Our God has been with us every step along the way during this pandemic, but, but what we've really learned is that God was always with us before that too. But sometimes we took him for granted. Sometimes we didn't think about God when we didn't think we needed God. But when times got tough, we realized that sometimes God's presence was the only thing that got us through. And that presence was always there. Seventh thing that we've learned is that, you know, that future we're looking forward to, that time that we're looking ahead to, that normal that we want to get to. Well, the future may not look normal. The future may not be exactly like the past was. The future may not, um, may not allow us to be exactly as we were before, but what we've learned is we can cope and we can make it fit and we can make the future into something good and strong and powerful and faithful because we know our future will include two things. It will include the people that we love and it will include the God who loves us. And no matter what we have to do, whether we have to continue to wear masks for a while, whether we have to continue to, to wipe down our groceries, or whether we just have to be careful about, about hugging other people or keeping our distance, well, you know, we can live in that kind of future because we've learned, we've learned those lessons now. The eighth thing that we've learned is that faith is a strong medicine. I don't know about you, but... Uh, but these times together on Sunday morning have become even more important to me as we share together in God's presence, as we come to talk about what it means to be God's people, as, as we think about the fact that, that our faith is what helps us to keep going. And, and it, it's the kind of medicine that, that really soothes our souls and enables us to take the next step each and every day. And the best of all, that prescription is free, given to us by that God who loves us so much. The ninth thing that we have learned is that we define home very differently now. It used to be home was, oh, I don't know, maybe our house or maybe our neighborhood or maybe our town. When you've had to spend a lot of time in your house by yourself or just with your family, you know, you realize that's a special place. You realize that, uh, that, that home is where, where you are and you are able to be yourself. But home is also the place where you are with God, as we have learned. It's also our worship place. It's also our, our place for, for sharing together as we meet together in Zoom. It's also our, our coffee place as we all drink coffee together separately. Home is different than it used to be. Home is not something to get away from and then come back to. Home is something to cling to because it is so important. And then finally, number 10. And there's no, there's no magic to the number of things that we've learned here, but I just thought this was worth ending the list with. Words make a difference. One of the things that we've learned this year is that words really do matter. How we speak to each other, how we speak about each other, makes a difference. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about the problems of the pandemic or if we're talking about the problems related to the racism that we've been fighting or whether it has to do with problems related to faith. The way we speak to each other says a lot. And as we've talked about in other sermons, sometimes tone of voice matters. And sometimes the particular word you use makes a difference. And sometimes the ability to look someone in the eye and say something like I care about you, well, sometimes that can have a powerful effect. If you've ever tried to use sarcasm in an email, you realize that sometimes it doesn't come across very well, and you have to choose your words very carefully. Well, so it is for us. We live in a world now where we have to choose our words carefully. 
where we have to be careful when we talk about our faith. We have to be careful when we talk about how we relate to one another. And we have to be careful when we talk about other people's place in the world because we can't always stand in their shoes. We have to watch our words. Our words can be a powerful tool, but they can also, uh, they can also be hurtful. And so words can make a difference and we have to use them very carefully. There's been so much worry in 2020. So much worry about how we're going to live, how we're going to feed our family, what we're going to do next, and, and all of those were valid concerns. But in the midst of that worry, there's also hope. Hope that life will get better. Hope that God will guide us down that path. And hope that uh, that, that new way of life is not too far away. I want to encourage you as we move into the new year to move in with an attitude of hope, with the desire to see um, a brilliant and bright future, with the chance to see that good things are not very far away. I think if we take that kind of attitude into the future, it means a lot and it makes a difference. Remember what Jesus said in our passage today. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink or what you will wear? Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Friends, let us not worry, but instead let us be hopeful as we look ahead to 2021 and beyond. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the blessings that you give, for the hope that you offer, and for the opportunity to serve you faithfully. Help us to see beyond our own problems and concerns and worries and to realize that you have something much better in mind for us. All this we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. You know, I just learned something. I, th th these slippers are really comfortable. I can, I can see why you guys like wearing your slippers and, and sitting in your comfortable chair while you're watching uh, worship. I mean, what a, what a great, that's something else we've learned. How you can be comfortable in worship. What an exciting thing that is. Well, anyway, it's time for us to come to our Lord in prayer. And so uh, at this time, uh, why don't we begin our time of prayer with a moment of silence and personal prayer. Let us pray.
But Lord our God, we thank you for hearing our prayers today. We thank you for hearing the needs of our lives and the problems that we face and, and, and the worries that we carry. You know, we, we, we live lives that are, that are not simply internal. We, we worry about so many other people, people in our families, people in our circle of friends, uh, people that have, have concerns that stretch far beyond anything that we're dealing with. And yet, and yet because we love one another, we, we want the very best for each other. And we thank you for hearing when we pray for each other. Lord, today we, we lift up our prayers for such a variety of reasons. We, we remember those who have recently lost loved ones. What a, what a difficult and painful thing that is. And especially during this holiday season, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's hard to remember uh, those who have gone before us. And uh, we pray for your healing power. We pray for your gentle touch. Uh, Lord, we lift up those who, who are facing illness or, or health problems or concerns. It's amazing how much a health problem can, uh, can really change our lives. And Lord, we pray for all of those who are facing such concerns, those who have been hospitalized, those who have been ill, those who have had COVID, uh, those who are facing um, surgeries to come or those who are recovering uh, from surgery. So many needs and concerns, and it's especially been harder uh, during this time when uh, visiting people in the hospital is, is much more difficult and uh, offering support is, uh, is harder than it ever was. Help those people to know that we care, that we love them, and that they are being supported. Lord, we pray for those with other problems and concerns, those who are unemployed, those who have financial concerns, those who are in relationship problems, those facing addictions or or problems with, uh, with mental illness. And we pray for those who have recently moved. So many in our family here have, uh, have moved to other places and they're still in our hearts, they're still in our minds, they're still a part of our lives. Uh, we pray that they will adjust to their transition um, and yet we pray that they will remember uh, the fondness that is felt for them still in this place. Lord, we have so many concerns, not just for people uh, that live in our neighborhood, but also for those around the world. We pray for men and women in other countries and other places uh, with other problems. We pray for those who, who don't know how they're going to feed their children tonight. We pray for those who live in countries where violence and oppression are a way of life. We pray for those who, who aren't sure if their homes will be safe or if their churches will be sacred. We pray for your comfort and for your care and for your strength, even in countries we don't know, even in languages we can't speak even in places we've never been to. Now, O oh Lord, we pray for your help as we move into this new stage in our lives, as we move from this year into the next, as we think about uh, the problems and concerns and opportunities that lay ahead. We pray that you will open our eyes and our hearts and our faith to the possibilities. And we pray that you will walk with us every step along the way. Be with us now and show us our unity, Lord, as we share together that prayer which Jesus taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to thank you for the way you have generously supported the ministry and mission of this congregation. Um, but our work doesn't end, and we pray that you will continue uh, to send your gifts to support God's work in this place. Uh, feel free to send your gifts, your weekly gifts, to the church office or go online. We have several suggestions of ways uh, you can give uh, digitally. And uh, we just pray that we can continue to use our resources, uh, to use our wealth, to use our generosity in ways that will make a difference uh, to the people in this community, uh, in this state, and in this world that we serve. Uh, so we thank you for your care and for the way you give so generously. Uh, once again, let us pray. Lord, again, Lord our God, we thank you for the way you give us generous gifts each and every day. And we pray that we can use that example and share from our own generosity as we give to you, as we give to your church, and as we give to your people. Guide us and show us how, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, amen.
Jesus said it really doesn't matter what you eat or drink or what you wear obviously what really matters is what's in your heart and in your faith and in the demonstration of your life we are all called we are all taught we are all encouraged to live lives of faith which means we follow in God's way it means we live lives of prayer it means we live lives of service it means we live lives that that show that that the rules of life matter and that we are willing to follow God no matter where God leads us. I want to thank you for your faith. I want to thank you for your love. I want to thank you for your encouragement. And I want to pray that we will continue to be a strong church no matter where the future takes us. As we live through the rest of this pandemic, as we go from this year into the next, let us realize that God is always with us and that God will always show us the way. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless.